Well, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Richard Piacentini. I'm the president and CEO for Phipps Conservatory and Botanical Gardens. And uh, I would like to start us off by thinking about the way we interact with the world. And I think if you look at the way most of us and most of our countries and most of our cultures, the way we interact with the world, we really do approach it from an extractive view. And this extractive view of the world is one of the reasons why we have climate change and many other environmental problems that we're seeing uh, in the world today. So trying to solve the problem by using the same way of thinking that got us into that problem is not a really smart thing to do. I think it's really important for us to be able, willing to explore, look into different ways about how we can see how we interact with the world and how that could change the way we think, how the way we value uh, view success, how we, how we operate our organizations, how we live our own individual lives. And for this uh, particular way of thinking, we'd like to reflect back on some of the work of Carol Sanford. And she talks about these four different paradigms of how we can interact with the world. And the first model she talks about is called the extract, extractive model. In this model, people who are, who are working from this point of view see the world as fragments there for the taking. It's all about them. Quite often they don't think about, or, or maybe they don't even care about who they're hurting or, or uh, what they're doing. Uh, as long as they get theirs, they're happy. And that's, like I said, that's how most of our world works today. The next model she talks about is called the less bad model. And in this model, people still see the world as fragments, but now they're trying to stabilize them. They're starting to see, it a little, it's not just about me anymore, it's about us. They're starting to see some interconnectedness. They're really getting concerned about some of all the damage they're seeing. And they're trying to see, is there a way that we can actually be less bad in the way we're doing things? And if you think about it, this is where the environmental movement started, this whole idea of reduce, reuse, recycle. Let's try and be less bad. The third model she talks about is called the do-good model. In this model, people still see the world as fragments, but now they're trying to improve them. And they're starting to see it's not just about me, it's about us. They're starting to see some reciprocity. They're trying to figure out how can we actually make things better than just trying to be less bad. Um, and you may, on the surface, look at this and say, well, that seems like a really good way to do things. But the problem with this model is that it requires somebody to decide what good looks like and then tell everybody else this is what you should be doing. And that's not a really good idea because we're all different. Our cultures are different. Our communities are different. Our, our, each of us as an individual is different. And one size doesn't fit all. The fourth model she talks about is called the regenerative model. And this model you don't see the world as fragments. You see that everything as holes. And you see all these holes nested within each other. And all you have these lesser and greater holes all interconnected. And anything you do anywhere affects everything else. And it's about understanding the relationships we have, the relationships we have with each other, other species, and everything else on the planet. And it's really this idea, it's about, it's more of a we instead of a me view of the world. Got the next slide, Joe. And a critical uh, component of this is, I'd like to pull out two things that she talks about in the seven first principles of regenerative thinking. And the first idea is this idea of essence and recognizing that every living being is unique. Every species is unique. Every individual within the species is unique. You can even say every organization is unique. Every community is unique. Every culture is unique. And it's really important to recognize the es these individual essences and respect those essences. The next thing she talks about is called development. And in this, the, the role of what we do in regenerative thinking is to see how we can increase the capacity of everything and everyone to be vital and viable based on their own individual essence. This is a, this is a really key component of this whole way of thinking is recognizing individual, individual essence and working to develop capacity uh, and, and really celebrating all those relationships that we have. So hopefully, um, this will give you an idea of where we want to go with this whole series of thinking that we really want to shift our minds from an extractive view all the way to regenerative view. And I think if you, this may not be right for everyone, but if you do, if you do find yourselves embracing this and this is something that you want to do and embrace, I think you will find that it will, it will definitely have a, a change in the way you see things, the way you do things, and clearly it will change the way you measure success. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to, uh, I guess, to Joe to take us into the next stage.
Thank you everyone for being here today. My name is Joe Reed. I'm the Senior Director of Communications and uh, I'm going to be taking you through a little bit of regenerative thinking today. Regenerative thinking is a series of principles and frameworks that um, at Phipps Conservatory we use to guide our work, and we think it's a vital component of uh, being able to address uh, climate change at uh, the institutional level and for the benefit of the public. And so today um, I'm going to talk to you about a specific uh, component of regenerative thinking called three lines of work. Um, in regenerative thinking, we consider ourselves and the actions we take through the lens of our embedded role within larger systems and how we can kind of transform those systems. In other words, say I work at a garden, but that garden is part of the city of Pittsburgh, which is part of the state of Pennsylvania, which is part of the United States. That's one way of looking out at levels. Um, another way could be I work at a garden, which is part of a network of gardens that is uh, across the country or across the world. Um, which is also uh, part of the network of nonprofits. So we're, we're embedded in many ways within larger systems. And one of the ways that we can focus our intentions around changing those systems and improving those systems um, is uh, three lines of work. In three lines of work, to start, I'm going to have you enter into a, a quick breakout, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, and I'll advance my slide here. So yes, think of a time when you feel you did something to make a difference in someone else's life. Um, you can uh, you can reflect on the first three questions um, in your thinking and then write in response to the fourth question. What did you do? Why did it make a difference? What value did it add? And what would it look like if you were to expand that value to a larger community or to the whole planet? So um, I would say uh, for your group, take about two minutes to write down responses, to, particularly to that fourth question, and then seven or eight minutes to share out as a group in your, in your discussion. And then uh, we'll return to continue. Okay, so welcome back. Um, I hope everyone had a good reflection. Um, now we're going to dig into the uh, the three lines of work framework. Yeah, in three lines of work, we look through our efforts. We look at our efforts through the following three lenses. The first line of work, which focuses on the development of ourselves, on creating new ableness within us to achieve our goals. Um, and then we have the second line of work, which is work on uh, developing the capability of each other in a team or in a group. Um, that's with your coworkers or your collaborators, whoever you happen to be working on the project with. And then we have the third line. And the third line of work is um, the aim that uh, serves the development and evolution of the larger whole. That could be, again, the community we serve, the planet, um, whatever it is, that's sort of your, your, your larger aim and what you have want to do at all three levels if three lines of work is uh is 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 working you're considering considering your impact across these three levels and making sure that um you are making a developmental change across those three levels so we're going to break out into another exercise to talk about the three lines of work and sort of look at a project from the from the three lines of work and um uh, I'm putting up some questions on the screen here, which would be good to pause or screen capture in order to uh, to keep them. These are questions that are useful for, for sort of interrogating the nature of each of the lines of work. For the first line of work, we have, who am I and what do I wish to contribute? And when we say, who am I, we're talking about, you know, the essence of oneself. Um, what is unique in you that you can bring to this process? And how do you need to grow and develop in order to do this work? Um, in the second line of work, again, we're talking about the team. So who are the partners and stakeholders needed to help create the change? What is our work together? And by the way, what do they need in terms of support? How can, how can you support one another as a team? And then lastly, on the third line of work, what is the specific and discrete whole system 
I am drawn to work on. So the beauty of the three lines of work to me is that um, one of the one of the really useful things about it is it isn't linear, um, even in spite of the numbers. You could start with your first line of work, um, knowing what it is you you wish to contribute, and then begin to think about the collaborative elements and the discrete system. Or you could know that you have some discrete third line goal, um, some change you want to make in the world, and work your way backward from the third line to the first line. And in fact, most beneficially, you can do both. You can work from the first to the third. Once you've developed those, give some time and take it back the other direction. And you'll see the way that making those considerations in the context of one another um, will help them to, uh, to become more developmental. And so um, with that in mind, I'm gonna take us to another exercise. So for this next exercise, um, we're asking you to think about a project your organization is working on. This could be a project, the same project you considered at the beginning of the session, or it could be something completely different. Um, and I'll ask you to consider the work of the project across the three lines of work, starting with the first line and moving outward. And then to consider the work across the three lines of work, starting with the third line and moving inward. Um, so take some time with this. I would reflect at least for five minutes in writing, looking at the project this way, and then give yourselves a good 15 minutes for a group discussion of what you observed as you uh, as you as you did this process. So hopefully everyone has had a, a good reflection so far. Um, I also want to share these questions, which will help to uh, to, uh, to to reflect further on the utility of three lines of work going forward. Um, what specifically felt different about the two directions and what does that imply about how we engage and work together? Um, how do you think you might use the three lines of work model in developing your projects? And how would you like to see us continue this conversation? And then just to wrap up, um, a couple of uh, a couple of things that to keep in mind with uh, the three lines of work going forward. To achieve an effect on a whole living system, you must be able to work with others. Um, the, the, uh, an issue like climate change is too large for any of us to tackle independently, which is one of the reasons that this paradigm is so useful in making this work happen. Um, and of course, to effectively work with others, you must work on yourself. That's how these three lines join together. And holding all three lines in mind will help to ensure that this work is happening in tandem and in a complementary way. Um, thank you very much and um, have a good day.